Hello, Bill here, Pale Horse Survival and Tactical. Back for another episode uh, in the uh, Primitive Fire series. And I'm still going through wood that I've uh, harvested over the, uh, the past year or so um, from various trees. And uh, today, we're going to make a bow drill kit out of, uh, this is a uh, redwood. Uh, specifically Dawn Redwood, D-A-W-N, Dawn Redwood. It's a, uh, it's actually a deciduous redwood tree. In other words, it loses its, uh, loses its uh, foliage, its needles, in the, uh, in the fall. And I harvest this, uh, it was last year I harvested this wood. So, uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. I'm going to this one has a knot in it on both sides, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, use this piece as the uh, little fireboard. It's going to be a little mini fireboard, and uh, this one's pretty clean. Uh, this will be the spindle, and it's a lot bigger than we need, so we're going to have to baton and split that down and uh, then finish it off. So we'll go ahead and get started, uh, I guess, by splitting out the uh, the hearth board here and I think we'll go ahead and uh, got a little little curve to it here so I'm not going to split it this way and have it with a curve so I think I'll split it against the curve here that way it will uh, it'll sit flat Go ahead and uh, go ahead and split it this way. Let's see what kind of damage we can do here. Yeah, this is nice and dry and soft. This is going to be. This should work really good. I've never used redwood. Uh, for primitive fire making purposes. So this will be a first, but uh, I suspect it's going to work pretty well. Yeah, this is really... Wow, this is really soft. You can see the uh, thumbnail marks I just put in there. It's always a good indicator give it the thumbnail test. Of course I've gotten coals with uh, oak and London plain, some of the very hard woods and uh, the trick to that is to uh, use a skinny spindle. Skinny spindle is going to produce higher RPMs which in turn will produce uh, more friction. The trick I discovered is I've been working my way through these kits. Let's see what side we're gonna use this at the top. It just sits a lot better and uh, it just feels like a top. There's a uh, knot on this side, so we'll use this as our notch side. That side's nice and clean, so that'll be our notch side. So we'll go ahead and uh, knock the bark off this. We have a hearth board. 
my hearth boards always come out at about a half an inch for some reason and that's the top that's the bottom and this piece here instead of whittling away on it for an hour we'll go ahead and rough it out by batoning and uh, then finish it off so we're going to get rid of a good part of the bulk here and whenever I'm splitting out a piece like this uh, I split it into, when I'm splitting a piece down into a spindle I, uh, I split it into a square roughly and then it's just a matter of smoothing out the, uh, the edges and you have a spindle chopping saves time came out a little fatter on one end here so machine this down video just a little bit ago uh, just before I started on this video showed how to uh, use a uh, ceramic honing rod and uh, use a belt as a, uh, a leather strop and how to maintain a blade and I discussed uh, discussed the various uh, knife grinds in the video check that out it'll be up on the up on the uh, I'll be loading that up tonight when I uh, when I do this one get everything edited out I put an edge on this old knife uh, actually shaved the patch of hair off my arm in the video ceramic coning rod and a leather belt This is what we have so far. That's the rough draft. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause the camera. I don't want to bore you guys to death. And uh, I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish this uh, spindle up, and uh, I'll be back with you shortly. Stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm back. Got. Uh, that's what I've got so far. And I noticed there's a knot up here on the top, so I'm going to go ahead and use that as the uh, the bearing block end, and uh, this will be the uh, the hearth board end. So. and I switched over to my little my little folder I've had for years. I use that for doing my fine work. Yeah, see the knots. Knots are up here, and you see a little, little resin in there. So that wouldn't be good for the fire making, fire making attempt. Let's go ahead and place this at the top, where it'll actually work a little better, I think, 
on the bearing block and that resin being in there and the knots makes this end a little bit harder so it actually works out really good for the uh, for the bearing block wouldn't work out good on the other end on the hearth board so we use this use this to uh, to my advantage here at the top See that's got a lot of resin up there in the top. And this end will go ahead and blunt this end off here. This redwood smells good. And when you do a spindle. Uh, you want to try and, uh, and get it fairly uniform in thickness along its entire length. Uh, if you have a fat end and a skinny end, what's going to happen is when you when you start to uh, to actuate the spindle with the uh, the bow, the string is going to migrate to the skinny end. So if this is skinny all the way to the top, it'll go all the way to the top, and once your string gets up in here, it's going to it's going to sabotage your uh, fire making attempt and uh, conversely if it heads down to the bottom gets down in here uh, it's going to be a failed attempt so just a little tip there just try and get them uh, get your spindle uh, fairly uniform it, has, it doesn't have to be exact you just don't want an obvious fat end and uh, skinny end And I think we're probably pretty good here. So a nice skinny spindle. Go ahead and uh, get the pilot holes started here. Pilot holes are uh, are very important. They uh, keep your spindle from wandering all over the place on the initial burn-in. I just angle my blade down and scoop it out. And again, doesn't have to be perfect, just uh, functional. Okay, so this is what we have here. Just dished out a hole, and uh, the end of the spindle fits in there perfectly. Rides right in there, so I think we're uh, we're good to go. Go ahead and uh, get this uh, hole burned in, and then get the notch cut. I have jute here, as in all my other videos, just standard jute. Uh, and in case you haven't seen any of the other videos, uh, I just make a little tiny, I'm not actually going to try and uh, get a fire going, I'm just going to get the tinder to ignite from the coal. So uh, what I do, I just make a small tinder bundle out of jute for demonstration purposes and just pull the fibers apart. Just pull the fibers. The uh, thinner fibers are going to be much easier to ignite, which is the uh, the reason why we do it this way. And just pull them apart. It's 
It's a nice fat piece here. Just separate all these fibers. And one more here. And we got a nice little tender bundle. And that's all we need for demonstration purposes. Stab it with a knife so the wind won't blow it away. Not that it's windy out here, it's just a habit I get into. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and pause this and reposition the, uh, the camera and I shall return. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm back. Got the camera repositioned here. And uh, go ahead and get this, uh, this hole burned in. Just kind of a little, little mini kit here. Let's see what uh, kind of damage we can do here. And on these little, on these small spindles, if you need a little more tension on the string, what I do is I grasp the bow with my four fingers. My thumb is always on the string. And what this allows me to do is, if I feel the string is going to slip on the spindle for whatever reason, I just press in with my thumb just like that and that that uh, takes up the slack and puts more uh, more tension on the line and it grips the spindle uh, a bit tighter. There's another little tip there. It's, oh, it's string migrating to the top. A little log because I believe I have uniform thickness here. Alright, let's try this again. And a good habit to get into is to always uh, lay your spindle down on something. I'm going to use my bow here, and that keeps the uh, the business end up off of the ground, uh, so it doesn't uh, absorb any moisture. All right, we have a nice uh, hole burned in here. Go ahead and uh, bring you guys up to the stump cut the notch on this. Oh, bear with me here. There we go. And I actually got a got a fairly uh, straight notch for a change. What I do is I go in and just clean it out a little bit. 
get any fuzz out of there, anything that's going to prevent the char from plumping together and building up in the notch. And that's pretty clean. That's not too bad. And what I do is the channel more oxygen to the coal it's a good trick is to uh, to fan the bottom of the notch just kind of be it open here Use some push cuts. And there it is. That's all you got to do. I'm going to bring you guys back down over here. Make sure I'm in frame. See if we can get a coal here. Use a leaf or welcome mat. Make sure everything's going to sit level. Good to go here. Shoelaces out of the way. Thing to sabotage the effort. All right. Start off nice and slow and. Keep your eye on the notch. That's the whole key. Just let that notch fill up with char. If you start cranking away too soon before you have a, a notch full of char, you're, uh, there's going to be nothing there to ignite. Already got some light smoke. I just give it nice nice smooth even strokes just wait for that notch to fill it's already smoking pretty good and I'm not even cranking on it I think I already have a coal and I'm not even having to hit it hard. I think there's already a coal going. I didn't even I didn't even have to crank on it. Oh that ignited so easy. That really ignited easy. Got down about halfway into the hearth board. Yeah, I didn't even have to, uh, I didn't have to crank away on it. I saw it starting to smoke pretty good. And the nice, nice thing about the leaf. It has a uh, convenient handle here to carry the uh, the coal around with. 
welcome mat with a handle. All right. That's got to be the easiest coal I've ever gotten going. Well, redwoods uh, must have a very low combustion rate. Let's see if we can get this coal in here. Just drop it right in. I want to smother it out. And there it is. Ooh. Almost burned up my tripod leg. Let me go ahead and pause this and uh, reposition uh, and uh, I'll be back momentarily. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm back guys. Got the uh, camera repositioned. I went ahead and gathered up the uh, shavings that uh, were laying here from the, uh, the construction of the kit. It seems to have a really low, uh, really low uh, combustion temperature so I was gonna go ahead and hit this with a ferro rod just for the heck of it. See how easy this uh see how easy this ignites. Well, ignited fairly easy. It'd probably be a lot better if I had reduced this down. Smaller pieces. Did get going there though. And I'm obviously just playing around at this point. Could have ended the video, but I figured I'd have you guys join me with my my playing around. Let's see how this works with the. Uh, Bark's not very flammable. Maybe the bark would have been pretty flammable. Switch over to my folder, it's a little easier to control. Use the 90 degree edge of the knife blade here. To uh, shave some of this into sawdust.
actually shaving the bark is making uh, some very fine tender here. It's going to be very, uh, very fibrous. It's the first time I've played around with redwood. Interesting. I wasn't expecting it to do this. This producer really a really fine tender. That's why it's very important to have a good 90 degree edge on the spine of your knives, uh, your bushcrafting knives, whether it's a, a fixed blade or a, or a folder. I actually did a video on this, uh, preparing a fire tender using the spine of your knife. You can find that on the channel. I just did that last week. and. Uh, uh, so this is another purpose besides uh, using the 90 degree edge as a striker for your uh, ferrule rod. Uh, it's a great uh, preparation uh, tool for uh, tender. Usually you can shave it down and you'll produce a, a sawdust, which I did in my other video that I did. Uh, but uh, this is the first time I played around with uh, redwood and uh, I'm actually kind of surprised it, uh, it produced a... It produced a uh, a tender bundle like this. So what we're going to do is, and I'm obviously still plain. See if we can get this uh, this tender bundle to go here. There it goes. Reducing it down to a, uh, a finer uh, finer material allowed it to take the spark much easier. Okay, I think I'm done playing. <laughs> Appreciate you guys uh, bearing with me through this. Okay. All right, so this was uh, this was redwood, and uh, it uh, it worked amazingly well. Um, I, uh, I'm actually shocked at how easy the uh, the coal uh, ignited. I've, I've never had one ignite that easy. I, I was just cruising along with the bow there as you guys uh, seen and uh, uh, never never had to crank on it towards the end to get it to ignite so it's uh, it, it obviously has a pretty low ignition ignition temperature so. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it, and uh, appreciate your uh, your viewership and your support. It means a lot to me. And uh, please like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you guys very soon on the next one. Everybody have uh, an awesome day or evening, depending on where you're located. I'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye bye.